You might want to think of this activity as more of a scavenger hunt than a, a lab or a dissection. We're going to see if we can find as many kinds of connective tissue as we can. We'll be looking for the ones that we've learned about, which are the loose, and then the fibrous, the dense, regular and irregular, and adipose tissue, and hyaline. Now, if you look at your sheet here, the elastic and the fibrocartilage, this is like the ear, the epiglottis, and this is in the spine. So we're probably not going to find these in a chicken drumstick because we're not looking at a spine and we're not looking at this kind of structure, ear and epiglottis. Now, perhaps some expert on chicken anatomy would say maybe there is this kind of tissue somewhere in this leg, but let's not worry too much about those. Let's just go after the other ones. And, um, of course, we're not going to be looking at a microscopic view, so we're not going to be saying, oh, look, there's a fat cell, because we can't see it. So, you know, we'll just do the best we can and try to point out the obvious things to look at. So what you want to do is find a nice clean work surface, and you might need some kind of a sharp utensil. That's what I'm going to use, an X-Acto knife with a really fresh, sharp blade on it. If you have a dissecting scalpel, you can use that, or a pair of dissecting scissors. Mainly what I use is my hands. I just very patiently kind of rip and tear and push. Your fingers are pretty good tools. So you kind of have to not mind getting messy for this. So first, let's start out by looking for adipose tissue. Now, this is the easiest one because it's often yellow. And right here, I see some yellow. It looks... I mean, it's not bright yellow, but in comparison to some of the other pieces, it's fairly yellowy. So I will assume, I don't have a microscopic view of it, but I'm going to assume that this is some adipose tissue. Now, underneath this, let's just peel back a little bit. So the adipose tissue, though, is going to be connected here to, you can kind of see where it ends, like the... The adipose is here. This still looks kind of yellow, but I would call this like the adipose. But then right here, what we have is the bottom layer of the skin. Right? So, you know, again, we don't have a microscopic view of it, but we know that skin has an epidermis on top and then the dermis underneath. So, you know, I'm looking at the bottom of the skin, so I know I have to be looking at the dermis. And that would be classified as irregular dense. We're going to see several areas where we're going to find irregular dents because, remember on our sheet here, irregular dents, dermis, periosteum around bones, we're going to find that fascia, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. We're not going to see submucosa, but we're going to see a lot of fascia. So let's go ahead and talk about the fascia. As you peel back the skin, do it very slowly and see how the area that I haven't peeled yet it's actually connected. Can you see that it's connected to this muscle area? But look at the muscle area. It's very shiny. So try to peel away the shine. If you very careful, there, it's like a bag around the muscle. Now fascia is the name of the network of connective tissue that basically makes up, covers everything in the body. Now can you pull, see how I have that little bit pulled up there? This muscle is in a bag and I've just put my blade right under the bag. It's very thin, it's transparent, you can see through it. But if I peel it away there we go, look at that. Okay, see that? Peel that away, and you'll notice that underneath then the muscle, this still looks pretty shiny when you get it completely peeled away. Now, this might be the outer one. The muscles are wrapped in several layers of bags, like the little ones are in bags, and then they're grouped together in larger bags, and the whole thing's in a bag. It's a bag of bags of bags. So, this one might be the the layer, the bag that goes around the whole thing. 
And so this particular muscle here would have its own bag. Look at that, it's got another one, I think. Because when you get the bag off, the muscle, the actual muscle won't look shiny. Once you get the connective tissue off, the actual muscle will look rather dull. So I'm thinking there's still even another layer on here, perhaps. Okay, there's some actual muscle tissue. Now, it's going to look shiny, I think, in the film. The light is, is picking up the, uh, the watery shine just because it's moist. It's reflecting the lights. But when I'm looking at it here live, and what you should be seeing is that once you get the, the fascia pulled away, the muscle will look more dull. So we'll try that on another place down here too. So let's just keep pulling and noticing where that bag goes. It should go all the way around. And this is what keeps the skin attached to the muscles, you know? So when you when you rub your skin, it just doesn't slide off. You can feel that it's attached. It's, it's loose enough, but it's attached underneath. And this is how. It's with this connective tissue. Now, I think we're coming up on another thing for our scavenger hunt here. careful when you cut, not just to cut yourself, but don't cut things that you don't want to cut. Don't just whack into it. Make sure you're cutting very carefully so we don't cut parts that we actually want to look at. Peel away a little of the skin here. Try to keep it in the center of the film here for you. Center of the camera. See, this one, this is pretty thick here. This fascia. Everything in the body is connected with fascia. We're basically just fascia with organs and bones stuck into little pockets in the fascia. Okay, so this is really what I want to see right here. You see these white lines going down? Okay, so this, this bag, this muscle is still in its bag. The bag is the tendon. You see how it turns into the tendon? This down here where it's solid and white, it's starting to look like a tendon down here. Carefully pull it out. You can kind of, you may have to just sort of pull really, really hard. I think I may have sliced something there. Okay, so here here is the tendon down here, and I've just pulled out a tendon right there. Okay, so there's check mark. We just found, what did we find here? We found regular dents. This is regular dents, so all the collagen would be going the same way. It's very, very strong. If I pull on it, it's extremely strong. Just about impossible. It'll tear away down here before this will tear. If you pull like this, it's really, really strong. So the tendon, this tendon here, right here, you see how it is part of this fascia bag. It's like the bag, the bag, you can see it, you know, getting thick. Wherever the tissue gets thick, it's going to get white. Here it's so thin, it's clear and it gets thicker here. And so the bag kind of gathers. It's just as if you'd take a paper bag and you'd, you'd gather it and crumple it at the end. And so, you know, it looks more solid. And that's exactly what's going on here. Just imagine this is a, is a plastic bag and you've kind of crumpled the end. 
So it's the bag that's attached to the bone. Let's see if we can find where it attaches down here. It might be a little difficult. Eh. Yeah, this is going to be a little difficult. All right, I'm going to cut a little more of the skin away. Expose the joint. I see a bunch more little tendons in there. And here's another one right here. Look at this. Oh, this is great. This is hyaline cartilage. Those shiny white ends there. That's hyaline. And of course, this is the type that has the chondrocytes and the lacuna. And the main feature of this is there's just no capillaries and there's no nerves. Now, of course, this being the joint, this would have connected to another piece here. And this is where all the rubbing goes on. So you really don't want nerves right here because this is what's going to rub like this all day long. And you really want this padding to be nice and slippery and not painful. So let's go back up here. Look at this end. All right, this has been cut for us. We can see some of the red marrow in the bone there. There's a little more hyaline cartilage. Do you see any ligaments? Ligaments are what connects bone to bone. I'm not sure. They really kind of chopped right through the joint. We'd have to get one that was had a thigh attached to maybe see the ligaments. There's a bunch more hyaline cartilage. Here's some that's a lot thicker right here. Get a nice solid thick piece of cartilage going around, kind of created a covering that's been chopped off now. There's another nice thick white piece right here. So you can see how this is all kind of surrounded too. There's a surrounding piece. So our bodies are not that different from a chicken's, biologically speaking. So we would have these same features. Now here's a muscle I don't know if you can tell in the film, this is, yeah, it still looks kind of shiny from the glare of the lights, but when I'm looking at it, it looks more dull. It's had its um, fascia pulled off here, and you can actually feel the muscle tissue. So at the end, though, the way it connects, the muscle, even though it looks like the muscle is right next to the bone here, what's connecting it is... The connective tissue, the fascia. They don't call it connective tissue for nothing. Muscle tissue itself, the actual muscle fibers, don't attach to the bone. It's the fascia, it's the connective tissue that connects the muscle to the bone. So I'm going to peel little more of this away. Kind of just be very firm. Get my exacto in here. Oh, there's a nice tendon right there. So this is a smaller muscle inside. Here's another one that's connecting a sub-muscle. Look at that. There's a tendon right inside of there. And there's another one. So you've got these little subunits. Right? A drumstick isn't just one muscle. It's a bunch of small muscles that work together. And there's another one I cut through. Look at that, how this one kind of goes along the bottom, kind of perpendicular. And of course this is very cleverly designed so that they're all in the right place. Or all the different motions you want to make. Gives a lot of subtlety to the movement. 
Let's see if we can follow this tendon. Where does this one go? Let me trace it down, this one right here. You see even the tendons, if you pull on the tendon, the tendon isn't just sitting there. Look at that. The tendon is still attached. There's this film that attaches the tendon down like here and keeps it in place. It's not loose. I have to actually cut it to get it loose. Where does it go? Oh, it goes all the way down here. Look at this. Very carefully peel the skin off. Well, there's a, wow, there's a thick piece. Look at that. That's a nice thick piece of uh, connective tissue there. Same kind of thing that the, uh, the C's are made of. Follow it down. Where does it go? Okay. Goes all the way down here. See, it comes down here. And it joins. Looks like all the tendons are coming. Down and they connect to. There we go. They connect right here. They all just kind of merge into this connective tissue that's covering that joint. That's where they go. Okay. So that's, that's nice. We can just kind of. Lift that right out of there. It's also complicated. So it's really important to remember that like all the fascia, all these connective tissues are all connected in an entire network because then these, of course, there's you know, a foot missing down here and these things would be connected. There'd be connections, tendons going all the way down here so that, you know, when this one is pulling here, this one might be pulling the leg up down here. So we found loose connective which is on the underside of the skin, that we couldn't see all that interesting loose connective stuff. We know it's there. We found that. We found adipose, and we found some regular, which are these tendons and ligaments. Those are regular tissue, and remember regular means they're all parallel and they're really strong. And we found some irregular, which is all these bags everywhere, and also the bottom layer of the skin, right? and all these tissue bags are the irregular types. Now there's another place we could find irregular and that is around the bone. So we know there's a bone in the center here. I can feel it right here. We want to be very careful to cut down into it, observing all these connective layers. And there's a layer that goes around the bone called the periosteum. Kind of pull that back and expose the bone. There's the bone. I feel like a surgeon. Okay. What we want to observe is that there's a slippery bag around the bone also. And I think, can I just see it there? Can I lift that? Okay, there's, look at that. Cut back the muscle a little more so we can see it. Can you see, if I zoom in here again, you see this? There's some connective tissue right here. A bag around the bone. And I'm not sure if that actually is the periosteum that might be, or if there's even another layer. It's hard for me to tell. I'm going to peel off this layer here. So it's important to remember that even the bones, you can really see that, even the bone has a bag around it called the periosteum. 
and so this would be connected to the bone. Like I said, I'm suspicious as there's even another layer here. So the bone is covered with connective tissue that then connects to all this other connective tissue. Now one thing you're not seeing a lot of here is blood, blood vessels. We can't see the capillaries because the capillaries are microscopic. But there's a few, see if you can find a few little blood vessels. There's one right there running through. So this has actually been kind of drained of blood, right? It's been um, had some of the blood removed. Let's try to peel this away. What I want to do, there we go. An important blood source, if we can, while we're in here, is, oh look, at there's, there's a little tiny piece that's attaching to the bone right there. Um, see if you can find a place where a blood vessel enters the bone. I think I see one right here. I'm going to cut that. See here, we've got a little place where there's a blood vessel and there's a little hole in the bone that's going into the bone. The bone needs to be connected to the blood system. The bone's an organ and it needs a blood supply and there's a little hole where the the blood vessels are running in and out of the bone right there. That's kind of a little cool feature that sometimes you miss while you're chowing down eating chicken. Thought we'd take a look behind here just to see what's on the other side. Again, wherever it looks like the muscles attaching directly to the bone, actually microscopically if you looked at it, it would still be connective tissue. And of course the interesting thing to think about is, so we're going to find out when we get to studying bone, it'll head start. Bone itself is actually a network of collagen. And the difference is that the network is filled in with calcium and phosphorus and minerals that make it hard. But the bone itself is made out of collagen. So it's easy for the collagen to connect to the collagen, right? The collagen and the bone on the outside of the bone there can connect to the fascia because it's all collagen, it's all compatible tissue. So let's see if there's anything interesting behind here. Cutting through all this fascia. Let's see if there's any other don't see any other uh, blood. There we are back to the, there's the little blood vessel again right there. I think that's the one we saw on the other side. I think there's another blood vessel down here. Blood supply to the bone. Right here. There's one. Remember, skin is not just epithelial. It's epithelial on the top, but the underside is connective, which is how it connects to everything underneath. One more thing you might want to try to find here is there's a, another little bone here. There's this big bone here, which is easy to find. And then right to the side here, there's a small bone. And of course, we have this same structure in our lower legs and our forearms, like we have like ulna and radius and stuff, and chickens have the same little small bone that goes right here. And um, it attaches this little knob up here that we saw, and that's what it goes to all the way down through here. If you want to dissect on down through there and find out where that bone ends, you can do that. When you eat cooked chicken, you meet this bone a lot it's a sharp end right here. All the connective tissue kind of falls off and you're just left with the end of the bone here. You pull it out and it's kind of sharp. Got to be careful when you're eating the drumstick. 
And if you slice a little bit of the hyaline cartilage up here, you can see how much softer it is than bone. Bone is, I don't call it compact for nothing right there. So I think we did pretty well at finding a lot of different types of connective tissue. And of course, we weren't going to find fibrocartilage because that's like between the backbone and we don't have a backbone here. And the elastic where it's just in like the ear and uh, probably in the chicken, maybe it's in the waddle. You know, that's kind of their equivalent to the ear, but we don't have a waddle here, so we couldn't find that. But other than that, I think we did pretty well on our scavenger hunt. Now, for cleanup, number one, don't forget to wash your hands, wash the plate, wash the knife. Make sure you get, you know, soapy water over everything. That's just a standard precaution when you're working with raw meat. And then don't forget, this is edible. If you don't eat meat, that's okay, you can dispose of it. But if you're okay with eating meat, you can, like, fry this up and have it for a snack, okay? So there's no reason that you have to throw it out just because you looked at it scientifically. It's still edible, and you can, um, you know, recycle it and, and have a snack.